Uh, how is it going today? Second of September, uh, Monday, and we are taking a look at the market. What kind of opportunities we can find, and what will be important. I had review all the government press releases. Not that many are available today, but there was a lot of very important press releases uh, this weekend. And we were taking a look at government initiative when it comes to building wealth fund in the UK. So I thought in today's video, let's take a look at uh, what's happening in Norway. And perhaps uh, that would be like a blueprint, quote unquote, right? So there was the example of uh, the work, right? <laughs> there is an example of how to do it. And there are some governments who are doing it differently compared to the UK. So I thought let's take a look at how Norway is doing it. And perhaps that might be of interest uh, for other governments, not necessarily just UK, to take a look at how it's been done, right? Uh, we can start by setting a stage, uh, so that would be... I personally believe when it comes to gas, there's a market, right? So the Norway is producing a lot of gas. Uh, they can, but not necessarily that they... There's a, when it comes to market and doing business, right? There's supply and demand, right? When it comes to supply and demand, it depends on the price. Or when it comes to selling a lot of gas and oil to Europe, so if it can, yes, it can sell a lot. But what what is the price, right? <laughs> Since we're taking a look at finances and how finances would be managed in entire fund, well, which we can take a look at, uh, would then perhaps next press release. But first one, we can take a look at. Um, I, I by the way, I've been to Norway. Beautiful place. Uh, I hope to come back there. <laughs> so let's, let's take a look at this press release, right? So I get some bias, right? A Norway pipe gas volume could rival historic high this year. Uh, so let's try to understand this. So, so I haven't read it. Some of this information was published six days ago. Uh, just a quick one uh, where we are on our progress on the calendar. We have uh, finished week 157 overall it's great week uh what i'm focusing on right now on the sales primarily but uh and some of the contracts uh we're going to be progressing to you next week that will be week 158 every second week we're going to be doing a lot of marketing and sales as well as we're going to be taking a look at government contracts and closing a week and we're going to be taking a look at uh norway so Europe's biggest gas supplier. I don't know if uh, currently Europe is offering best price for its gas, by the way. I don't know if uh, that, uh, that's something to consider since uh, the market, right? So there's a massive demand for gas, but I don't know how much Europe is paying for it, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's a different story, right? Pipeline gas exports up by 10% year on year so far. So they have increased by 10%. But they could easily increase that by an additional 50, I would say. <laughs> and Europe is still buy it, right? Otherwise, there would not... Uh, Germany is so heavily industrialized government, right? They could potentially purchase way more, but for different price. Maintenance ahead of winter will be closely watched, right? So, so potentially the entire structure, there might be uh, <laughs> need of maintenance. Stavanger, again, beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, right? The region pipeline and gas exports to Europe could uh, approach a 2017 historical re uh, record this year after rising 10% so far in 2024 following the decline in 2023. Head of system operation, uh, there is a name of businesses, right? So I'm not necessarily interested in promoting those. So we're just focusing on gas only, right? And uh, some of those operators of the gas lines, right? Uh, so there's the other governments, including Russia, who can offer uh, gas as well. But there's a conflict out there and everything what's ha uh, what is happening. And this is what it leads to, right? As of end of July, Norwegian pipe gas volume totaled at 70.2 billion cubic meters. Compared with 64 uh, BCM for the same period last year. So there was slight increase. A leverage said market the first time uh, the uh, either, either way, either way. 
So we can take a look at the entire sector and uh, I, again I'm reading all this information for the first time that could be in 2023 uh, this company potentially uh, uh, 109.1 billion cubic meters of gas through uh, its 8.8 .8 kilometers uh, pipeline network to Belgium, Britain, France, Germany and Denmark down 6.7% from 116.9 BCM a year earlier. So potentially they're selling this to when it comes to industry and uh, cheap energy potentially gas, right? But again, there's uh, a lot of pushback when it comes to alternatives to perhaps more sustainable sources. But either way, we're just taking a look at price ahead of winter, right? And uh, where to purchase uh, some of those gas and how uh, those finances would be used. Uh, potentially, <laughs> there is increase of need by 10%, right? So more finances would enter uh, Norwegian bank on uh, overall investments, right? We can take a look at, I haven't read any of this information when it comes to wealth and how this wealth would be managed, right? So that we can briefly, again, I'm not promoting any of those companies. And uh, it's been recognized by UK that they should be taking a look at and uh, establishing a similar uh, way of managing finances, right? Not necessarily if they would earn money, not necessarily spend it straight away, right? Perhaps invest it. <laughs> That's the other way of doing it, right? About the fund, government pension fund global was established after Norway discovered oil in North Sea. The fund was set up to shield the economy from ups and downs in oil revenue, right? Uh, many people would say it's very fragile uh, industry. Right? It also serves as financial uh, reserve as long uh, term savings plan so that both current and more future generations of Norway can benefit from oil wealth. But, uh, talking about oil, but I would say it's not necessarily limited to oil since we were just taking a look at the gas as well, right? Uh, and uh, it, it depends so there's addition to that as well as uh, we can potentially take a look at lithium as well so they even diversifying the economy to such a point where they take a look at uh, extracting and <laughs> there's more to it right so we just take a look at two areas potentially in uh, 1969 one of the world's largest offshore oil fields was discovered uh, of Norway Suddenly, we had a lot of oil to sell and our country's economy grew dramatically. It was decided early on the revenue of the oil and gas should be used cautiously in order to avoid imbalance in the economy. In 1990s, the Norwegian parliament based legislations to support the creation of new government pension fund global. And the first money was deployed in a fund in 1996. As the name suggests, it was decided that the fund should only be investing abroad, right? So potentially diversifying, right? So I'll well, perhaps stop uh, if I were to stop the here, and we can take a look at it and bring it back to UK, and perhaps UK had the same opportunity what you uh, UK have chosen, and all uh, the leadership <laughs> have chosen to use potential money but let's delve deeper and let's see what kind of information we were to find up there right <laughs> i haven't read myself so let's take a look at what kind of information is available there and that should be perhaps the historical data so it should be accurate yes uk uk did have the opportunity to build sovereign wealth fund but they're looking to do that now uk by the way right now they're looking to do it but they had opportunity historically speaking to do it similar to norway's but it so it's different economic and all fiscal strategies that led down different path. Here are a few factual historical points and highlights why UK could help but did not create sovereign wealth fund akin to Norway's right. So the, the uh, time can always uh, <laughs> support different decision maker and, and or perhaps they had different priorities at the time. Many things right. It's very hard to capture everything. 
on myself I'm looking to understand it. Nor see oil reserve, a similar opportunity like Norway, like UK discovered uh, substantial oil and gas reserve in North Sea during the 1960s and uh, 1970s. Norway established its sovereign wealth fund, the government pension fund global in the 1990s to manage and invest the surplus revenues from its oil and gas sector to uh, benefit uh, future generations, right? So perhaps long term, way, 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 way generations so will potentially generational wealth and how to build and invest that. Uh, different use of revenues UK, however, choose to use North Sea oil revenues to fund government spending, reduce public debt and support cut our tax cuts during the 1980s. Under Prime Minister Thatcher's government, unlike Norway, UK did not set up dedicated fund to save and invest proceeds from North Sea oil production as the result of the revenues was absorbed into the general budget and used for immediate physical purposes, right? So different strategy, right? Uh, <laughs> Economic policy choices. Norwegian strategy Norway adopted a conservative fiscal policy investing in oil revenues in its sovereign wealth fund to avoid overheating its economy, uh, prevent currency uh, appreciations, and safeguard its wealth for future generations. UK strategy UK government prioritized short term economic growth and supply side reforms such as privatization and the regulation instead of saving portion of its oil revenues. UK choice was influenced by different economic ideologies, political priorities, and the immediate fiscal pressures at the time. So it's very hard to capture and they barely scrapping on the surface, right? <laughs> uh, political social context. Mm, I don't know if that's important, right? Number four, public finance priorities, debt reduction and deficit management. In 1980s, UK had relatively high level of public debt and focus on deficit reduction. The revenue from North Sea oil was seen as a way to establish public finance rather than the resources to be saved for a future welfare state of the public spending. In UK also faced significant pressures to fund its welfare state, health services, and other public expenditures with absorbed much of the available oil reserves. Okay, okay. The differences in oil wealth, scale of uh, longevity, with both the UK and Norway discovering substantial oil reserves, right? So potentially we have surplus, it's just a way, uh, so we have discovered a potential, a lot of revenue available and uh, decision making how to use that revenue, right? Norway revenues were largely delivered to its population and were expected to have longer lifespan. Norway decisions to create sovereign wealth fund was partly based on strategy to expand the benefits of oil wealth beyond the uh, depletion of its reserves. UK oil production peaked earlier and began to decline more rapidly, which may have influenced the decision not to establish a long term fund. Currency and economic management? Hmm, I don't know. No, let's close on the conclusion. UK has the opportunity to create sovereign wealth fund like Norway, but it made different choice based on economic policies, fiscal policies, political context, and the scale of its oil reserves. While Norway took a long term view, save and invest its oil revenues, UK opt to use its revenue in more immediate fiscal economic objectives, right? And perhaps right now the UK is looking to establish similar process when it comes to wealth and if they were to uh, begin generating a lot of capital how that uh, capital could be invested long term instead of perhaps immediate problems right uh, let's close the thanks for watching see you next one